This is the lock picking lawyer. I have another lock that Papa Gleb sent to me. This is a Corbin Sesame. And I've never had one before, so as soon as I got it, I was curious what made these so much harder to open than the Master 175s. So I got a 175 that I had, and I got my Sesame, and I put them on the my little mini mill, and I opened them up to take a look. Now. It's this little piece of metal right here that's the reason you can't bypass the sesame like you can the 175. But let me tell you what really struck me about this when, when I opened up the lock, and that is the quality of the internals. As you can see in the sesame, it looks like that's all solid brass inside. What you have on the master lock is copper-coated zinc. Ah, oh, we've seen zinc recently, haven't we? Yes, that's right. I am thinking that there might be yet another way to humiliate these Master Lock 175s. I'm not going to do another bypass video. There's enough of them on the internet. My theory is, is that if you apply heat to the outside of the, this lock, the locking bolt right here will melt and the spring pressure will push it together and this will just pop open. So all you have to do is just put heat on the outside of the lock and it'll pop. So I'm going to do two tests. The first one I'm going to do on this. This is the newer 175 with the aluminum outside. And I'm just going to put the heat right on that, right on that locking lug and see what happens. And then what I'm going to do is take this slightly older 175 with the brass outside. The, uh, the brass case has a melting temperature of about 1,750 in comparison to the 750 degree melting temperature of the zinc. And we're gonna see if we can just put some heat on this totally closed lock and just make it pop open. Then we'll take it over to the mill, open it up and see what the inside looks like. So let's get this set up. First, first one I'm gonna do is is this one. Let me get you a good angle to watch this. And if my theory is correct, we'll just put a little bit of heat right there and this lock will pop. Let's start the torch up. Okay, that didn't go quite as I thought it would. I thought the spring tension on the shackle would would pop this, this shackle right up as soon as the locking lug melted. And that's not what happened at all. Uh, what happened is I melted the aluminum housing. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let me see. 
Let me get rid of this lock. Dump that in my master lock, lock <coughs> graveyard. And let's see how it works on the brass one. The Now brass has a melting temperature about a thousand degrees hotter, um, higher than the zinc. So in theory, this one might work a little bit better. Let's give it a shot. Well, there you have it. That's what happens when you make the internals of your lock out of a low melting temperature metal like zinc. Now I'm gonna let this cool down and uh, stop the video. And then I'm gonna take this over to the mill, open it up, and then I'll start back up and show you what's inside. Okay, I'm back with you. The lock has cooled down and I chucked it up in my, in my mini mill. And we are gonna cut it open and see what, what happened to the inside. As you can see, some of that zinc melted out over here and came out the numbers on the bottom. So I'm expecting to see a lot of carnage in there. Let's, uh, let's cut it open and see, uh, see what's in there.
Okay, let's take a close look at that. Let me clear some of this debris away. And we can see what's inside. Absolute carnage. Everything has melted away. It's just a blob of metal in there. So, master lock. This is what happens when you make the internals of your lock out of cheap metal. That's all for now. If you have any comments, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.